again? Wait, wait, something okay now? Okay. He's, he's plugged something in a little bit differently. Um, is there a way to ask the person who sent the message to us? It's on. Mm -hmm. It is? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Shea, um, keep us surprised, okay? Very good. Uh, let's push on. Okay, so let's hear about the Hallowath Gardens. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm David Bennett, City Engineer. I'll let Susan and Ann introduce themselves. Um, you don't get to hear me much tonight, so good for you all. I'm just giving a brief introduction and welcome. We are wanting to go over kind of our status update of Hiawatha. Uh, you're also about to see coming out, you, you should have received a press release um, via email from Alex, and then we have a whole bunch of information coming out um, in the next week or so, March 8th. So I'm going to hand it over to Ann and let her tell her part. Thank you, Dave. So basically, there's not a lot new um, that I'm going to cover. I think most of the new information would be what Susan's going to go over. But we have clearly, maybe next slide, we have secured the building against intrusion and weather, and that seems to be holding up very well. We did in October, through an RFP process, hire BVH as the architectural engineering firm that's going to start there in phase one, which is providing kind of conceptual designs and site. Um, plans, a, no, a number of optional site plans that we will be taking to the public here fairly shortly. And then they will go on once we get public input to phase two. But we're focused very clearly now on this phase one alternatives. And we have made an effort to coordinate more with the mobility and parking board and to get their input on the mobility part of this project. And that, I think, has worked well. The next slide is the funding. And we did, through the match, we requested $75,000 to carry us through basically the phase two of the BVH contract. Um, Crane has requested through match funds to put a mural on the side of the building, which we think will enhance the appearance while we make other decisions. And we did apply to History Colorado for a $15,000 planning grant, and were granted that, I think, last week. So that's been a, a big help. I think it generates some enthusiasm and shows to people that, from the historic preservation perspective, people think this is a real project. So I will now turn it over. And, and right, that was done actually in-house by by Emily, <laughs> who we would not be able to survive without. So that was quite an accomplishment. Thanks, Ann. Susan. Um, as Ann and Dole mentioned, our next big step that we're really excited about, next slide, please, is to um, start gathering community responses to our draft plan. So uh, we're looking forward to two meetings, one on March 16th, which will be a Zoom, Zoom meeting and then another on March 30th, which will be an in-person meeting in this building. So um, at those meetings, we will be sharing the alternatives, the draft alternatives that BVH and the task force have worked hard to, to develop over the last X months. Uh, and we want to get community response to those alternatives, and we want to gather new ideas. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to those, and we would appreciate it if you'd do your best to encourage all your friends and neighbors to attend. Um, Alex put out a news release today, so we're starting to get information out about the meeting. So um, another really cool thing that we're excited about that we've created is, is a new method, at least for us um, was called a, the Virtual Information Center, and it's a, a presentation that will be posted on the city website. Thanks again to Emily. Emily's wonderful. Um, she's pulled all this together. Um, it, it gives information about the Hiawatha Gardens alternatives, about the draft plan, also provides some background on how we got to this point. Um, so that will be posted, as I said, on on the website on March 8th, 
again, it's, it's great information. It's really gonna help promote transparency and awareness of this project and hopefully understanding as well. So we're hoping people will go to the information center prior to the meeting so that they're well informed about the alternatives before they get there and they can develop their questions and that the meetings will be as efficient and as helpful as possible. Um, it's a great information tool. I encourage each of you to go to the website and check it out because it's, it's pretty neat. Um, in 2018, City Council defined a list of givens for the Hiawatha Gardens project. Uh, the givens, as you know, really define what decisions the community can influence. They set the parameters for the decision-making process. So the task force believes it would be important for this, this city council to update the, the council givens so that they reflect the current situation. If we could have the next slide, please. Um, I hope you've all had a chance to review these. As you can see, we've got uh, four, four of the givens. Number two, we're suggesting updated language to the 2018 given that uh, reflects the results of the mobility study that indicates that uh, Hiawatha Gardens was designated to be a mobility hub. Um, given number three is also new. We inserted that given because, as you well know, the City Council passed a resolution in October 2020 that laid out the mission, if you will, of the task force and, and really sort of defined the, the use of that property. Number seven is also updated language from 2018. It, it uh, talks about parking, inventory, on the Hiawatha Garden site. Um, and then number eight is also, that's a new given. We wanted to make sure that we were stating that the mobility hub will be totally accessible to everyone. And so that given talks about fe federal and state regulations, including the Americans with Disabilities Act. So we would encourage city council to approve these givens to reflect as I said, the current situation, uh, the decisions that have been made on this, on this project since 2018 when the original givens were established. So I'll send it to Dole to wrap up. Okay, thank you ladies, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna look at yours because I can't see yep. without my teeth, without my glasses on. Okay, so we have what's coming up. Um, many of you hopefully know that this is um, going to be in front of the historic to, to about getting it into the district, the historic district in April. Uh, that's critical for us for that building going forward. Um, when we talk about temporary parking space expansion, we're referring to the dirt that's out there. And as a side note, I actually had a dream last night that I rented equipment myself and went out there and graded it and compacted it. So. I actually may make that a reality, Roy. But all joking aside, I think there's some um, valuable real estate there that we need to do some prep work to get it uh, more, more compacted, more dense, and uh, better hold up to uh, wheel traffic. But I think it could be used this summer and help and that kind of, that kind of stuff. Also, um, Park and Rec have done quite a bit of landscaping on the north side of the building. They've cleaned up the shrubs, they've put in these really neat steps, and so they've really made that area better. They line those steps up where a lot of people tend to have like a social trail anyway, so that was all done by Manitou staff, and they really did a good job on it. And I think um, that's it for us, and we welcome any questions. Okay, council, questions or comments? I don't know. Julie? Thanks. Um, one thing is, w will the draft drawings be available on the city website prior to the date of the meetings? Yes, they will. And then Starting March 8th on the Virtual Information Center, they'll be there. Oh, thank you. And also a um, verbal presentation of the alternatives by the consultants. I thought March 8th was the meeting. No, that's when the Virtual Information Center gets posted on the website. Oh, the apologize. meetings are March 16th and 30th. Okay, you that's said okay. that. Sorry. Yeah. That's all right. My other question is, um, with respect to number one under the givens, um, 
uh, and I, I'm just not real clear on this. Um, is th isn't this within the scope of the mobility enterprise to pay for the uh, maintenance of the building and the site, or is that uh, segregated from the enterprise? I guess that's not really a question for you. I guess it's more of a technical question. I don't know. Who would answer it? Maybe the attorney. For what it for what it's worth, we do not expect a, a large maintenance expense at this time. Like the building has been sealed up, the site seems secure and stable. So, except for maybe normal snow operations, which are already occurring at the parking lot, anyways, we don't expect a bunch of um, maintenance oh. to occur at the building. Thank you. That helps. That's all I have. And I don't also know if we mentioned, but we did s install. We've talked about this before, but it's up and active and. We did install security cameras at the building. We have two on exterior, we have one interior, and um, the raccoons are <laughs> pretty cute. We have lots of video of raccoons checking out the cameras, um, but, but it was just a reminder of how important it was for us to secure, which we have since further secured the building from them, so. Good, thank you. Council? Uh, Mr. Shada? Yes, I, I really like how the building's stabilized and looking, and I really look forward to you know, the, the mural concept. I guess I'd like to get a status report on um, where we stand on some lighting on that rather dark parking lot. I think for um, employees and people who may be parked down there and then have to return to that area at night, I think that is pretty scary back there. I don't think there's a lot of danger, but I think when people just see a huge, big, dark, black area, it's almost kind of hard to even find your car. What are our thoughts on lighting? Mr. Cheney? Yeah, so we'll, uh, before summer, we'll be adding some lighting. Um, we might have to add some to the building as well, but we couldn't do it while they were removing and doing the construction. But we'll look at the area and see if we can't light it up better for protection of folks. Um, the other thing that I was just wondering about is do we have any idea how we could, given that that building I think was re-roofed recently for an insurance claim, so it seems like to me the shingle style and the whatnot should be likely readily available. I was wondering if we could sort of kind of finish that patchwork so that it doesn't look kind of so motley. Um, is that a possibility? It seems like to me it would be a, maybe a few thousand dollars or something like that to get a roofer out there to kind of do that. I don't know. It doesn't seem like that's a big job. I think that's just piecing it in, isn't it? Uh, yes, I think you're right. I think it's something we could take to the task force. Okay. I think it, it is a good idea. It does face Manitou Avenue and it is a big bright triangle, so I think there is some value in that, yeah. Well, and there's that other little patch on the back side too. And I just think by kind of just cleaning it up a little bit even more, I mean, we're, we've made so much progress from it being just a really scary, scary building in, in a parking lot. And I think just a little bit more love would go a long way. Thank you. Um, also, if I can add, you know, we should be able to find the roof specific shingles from the insurance claim. And then also I just want to take credit because the task force, we worked, you guys might remember there was a drainage swale on the east side. You know, we worked to actually pipe that to install an inlet and then regrade all that. And that significantly increased the amount of square footage out there that, that will benefit the city and the community and mobility and that kind of stuff. And I guess my other little request is that we just look at the entire kind of roof line on that building. It seems like to me there's some little opportunities to kind of, seems like on the east side there's still kind of a bizarre little, what, air conditioning or swamp cooler pad or something. You know what I mean? In terms of, it just seems like if we could just show a little bit more love to that entire roof, okay? Um, you know, if there's some diddly old, pipes or something sticking up. I hope somebody gets up there and pulls those things up. I don't think they're historic. So that's just my comment, you know, just a little more, just a skosh bit more love. And I think it will go a long way. And then I think with the painting of some murals and hopefully maybe even just 
I believe the contractor, when I was touring it, said they saved an awful lot of trim and stuff like that. And maybe if we can just even put a fresh coat of paint on trim and stuff like that and just make it seem like that building, I think could just really shine in a very short period of time with I think a minimal expense. Thank you, that's my input. Thank you, Mr. Shada. Uh, Councilor Chandler. Just a few comments. Um, so first of all, congratulations on the $15,000 grant. That's wonderful, and I can't wait to see the, uh, the virtual website. That's gonna be exciting. Um, I just wanted to say kudos to um, the Hiawatha Gardens Task Force and um, the way in which um, you have been working with other entities in the city. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, and I wanna give a shout out to Skylar Beck because we don't often you know, get to talk about all the, the great things, but um, when that El Paso design, the, the, the landscaping design was being put into place, um, Climate Action Work Group members were asked to come, uh, members of the Pollinator District, and I believe Becca Sickbert from now Crane was there. And we had a meeting on site, and we asked for a lot of things, including you know native uh, pollinator plants and so on and so forth. And we also had a big ask not to start the process until after the deer were done using uh, it, you know that habitat. And, and, and we got a big yes on all of that, and I think that the result was just such a great collaborative process, and I would just love to see more of that happen. So I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for all of that. So that's all I've got, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councilor. Other comments from Council? Okay, very good, thank you. Okay. Our next item, uh, item H1, it's a hearing, uh, includes a hearing. Second reading and public hearing of ordinance number 0422, an ordinance of the City of Manitou Springs, Colorado, amending Title II of the Manitou Springs Municipal Code regarding updating Chapter 2.24, Transportation and Parking Advisory Board, and adding the Manitou Arts, Culture, and Heritage Advisory Board under Boards and Commissions. Okay, so we have Becca Davis, our Finance Officer, and uh, Kevin Stevenson, our parking director. Good evening. Ordinance 0422's first reading was on February 15th when City Council approved the ordinance with one change, removing the Mobility and Parking Advisory Board's powers and duties, the section that states, board members may request future agenda items related to their concerns about mobility, transportation, and parking issues. The ordinance before you tonight has that section removed. Other than that, it is exactly the same as what you saw on February 15th. Also, I've attached the original um, code for the parking advisory boards uh, uh, powers and duties to the packet so that you can compare it easily. Uh, that's all we really have to say about this. So Kevin and I are here tonight to answer any questions you may have. Okay, great. I take it then, Kevin, you just, you wanna answer questions or do you have any remarks you'd like to make? I'm open for questions. I don't have any remarks. Becca stated everything very well. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Council, I, we'd uh, talk this over, we passed it on first reading. Um, this would be an opportunity to ask some questions. We will have a public hearing and uh, we can come back and ask additional questions of staff if we like. But this is a good opportunity to ask some additional questions if you have any. I see none, all right, thank you. So uh, I think we'll go ahead with the uh, public comment portion and uh, we'll probably ask you back for any final comments, okay? Thank you. Yep. So at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Any member of the public who would like to speak to this is welcome to do so. Uh, basically, the same rules apply that, uh, that we have for our non-agenda item comments. So we'd ask you to speak for no more than three minutes to identify yourself and give us your address and, um, and not try not to be too repetitive. Anyone like to speak to this? And Judy, did we have any emails or any communications? So we didn't have any. It appears that there's not much curiosity in this, but that's okay. 
In that case, I will declare the public comment portion closed. Council, we're back to staff. I doubt that we have any questions, but let me give you the opportunity. No questions? Uh, yes, comment please, uh, Nancy. Yeah, I just want to make comment. I think both boards did a really good job mm -hmm. on um, revising, creating on one hand and revising on the other hand. So kudos to them, thanks. Thank you. And Mr. Cheney, you've been very involved with the uh, parking board, so I would like for you to have an opportunity to speak to this if you would like. I just want to say that uh, it's been a pleasure working with the, uh, the old transportation parking board and now the new mobility and parking board. Um, they are really excited to get the mobility side into this, uh, one of their board requirements, um, because they f know the importance of micro mobility and mobility as a whole. So we're real excited to move forward and working with them on mobility and parking in Manitou. So, thank you. Thank you. Great. Council, last round of questions or comments. Judith. I'm just ready to make a motion. I'd like to move that we approve on second reading <coughs> ordinance number 0422, an ordinance of the city of Manitou Springs, Colorado, amending title two of the Manitou Springs Municipal Code regarding updating chapter 2.24, transportation and parking advisory board and adding the Manitou Arts, Culture and Heritage Advisory Board under boards and commissions. We have a motion, we have it seconded by Councilor Wolf. Council, any further discussion? If not, let's go ahead and vote. The little lights are blinking. And we have a unanimous vote in favor. Okay, okay motion passed unanimously. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Becca, Kevin, thank you. Roy, thank you very much. Super. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Oh, sure, go ahead. Um, so I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, um, one of the panelists asked us to re-approve the 10 givens, and I wasn't sure if we needed to do that or if that, I, I, did we need to take any action on that? That's my question. Well, I, I, I would note that in the memo, the, the memo indicated it was informational only. Okay, I thought so. I so. just did, she, it, was a, it was an ask of a panelist, so I just wanted to make sure that we didn't, we didn't there wasn't any business that we needed to do about that. No, I, I don't think that's, okay. uh, that's required. Thank you. Council, if there's somebody feels differently now, it'd be a good time to talk about it. Okay, I see no objection. Okay, we'll push on. Thank you. Okay, the next item of business is um, a memorandum, uh, discussion of a memora memorandum of understanding for the Creative Alliance Manitou Springs. Okay, looks like we have Patsy Sitzman and Becca Sickbert. Oops, okay. Patsy, okay, you need to. Got it. Okay, great. My name is Patsy Sitzman. I live at 125 Beckers. And uh, thank you all for everything you do. But I want to appreciate the opportunity to talk about um, what we're doing here. Um, you have copies of the new or the revised MOU, and we're going to discuss how the Creative Alliance Manitou Springs, which w was the Manitou Springs Arts Council and the Creative District, which we've merged together, um, saves the city money and resources, provides the community with transparency and accountability, big keywords, and our commitment to public art. We are going to save money and resources. Some of you know about the public art on the streets. If you don't, we're happy to give you a tour. But we're going to, this MOU, there's not gonna be any changes to the budget because we're combining the functions of these two organizations under one executive director, Becca Sigbert, who is terrific. Um, we'll commit hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars uh, to manage the selection process, which is very, very important with this because we want to reflect the values of Manatee Springs. Um, and the artist agreements, which is very important to the city so that we know who's doing what, when, and how. Um, we're going to take on the inventory and we're going to take care of the non-SURSA repairs. 
the SIRSA is the insurance of the city for public art. We're going to provide curation and the recommendations for public art placements. Um, we, and I in particular, am committed to transparency. Many of you know that. Um, we're gonna, we have clear policies, procedures, and processes in place now. Um, and we've done an amazing job with that, in my opinion. This is a much clearer, smoother organizational process now. And hopefully you will be impressed in the coming months. Um, we're following a competitive selection process. Um, we're gonna get the best values because we have a general idea how to negotiate this. Um, we're going to conduct public outreach. We're gonna ask Manitou and the citizens and the residents of Manitou, what do you wanna see? Um, we're already conducting some public outreach with, in conjunction with the city of Manitou, but we're gonna take it a little bit farther. Um, we're gonna provide accountability. There's going to be documentation and streams and processes that will have, well, we'll keep the city clerk very happy. Um, our mission is to lift up the artistic and the economic vitality of the city. When we have more public art, we make more money because there's more tourists in town and that will make the finance department very happy. Um, we're going to maintain all compliance. Um, some of you already know my absolute focus on compliance. We will comply with every generally accepted accounting practice. Um, and we have accurate, well, accurate assets lists in terms of what's out there. And um, I'm gonna add a little footnote to my notes. We're going to use, we're gonna develop a map and a walking tour of public art. That's the next little project we're gonna do. We have all kinds of little projects. Um, but we're, we're working in conjunction and in collaborative collaboration with other organizations. We want to make sure that everybody's working together here to make this place even cooler than it is. I appreciated um, the parade piece on Facebook, it was great. That's who we are. That's art in the streets. So, um, we're, I'm asking for your support and I'm asking for you to be a part of this partnership. We're gonna do some really cool, exciting stuff. Thank you. Becca, do you have a comment? You don't have any comments? Questions, comments? Running out? Comments. Need some red paint? We're gonna paint a mural on Hiawatha. Council, questions? Uh, Nancy? Yeah, I, as, as I discussed with you guys, first of all, Patsy, you've already increased my confidence in this. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. Sure. And of course, I'm always confident in Becca's um, uh, support and input. However, with the MOU, I, I just had, I found a lot of it very awkwardly written and um, not leaving me more questions than it answers. So, and way too many for me to discuss tonight. Um, so I guess I would say I would like this to come back to a work session or I could come and get, you guys could teach me a lot more. Sure. Or we move up the date of the reevaluation that is required um, from one year to much sooner than that to get it out there and working and then like in two months come back and we reevaluate it. Um, I'm just not comfortable, I'm not, it's a great starting point and I am thrilled that you guys are going in the direction that you're going because I, I do think that it makes things more efficient. But I, I have to be honest, the um, Arts Council has confused the heck out of me for the entire time I've been on council. So I'm hoping that what you guys are doing now will help reduce my confusion. So. I, <laughs> I, I will personally commit to reducing your confusion. Um, we're happy. This MOU has been a hybrid of the prior two. So when we do that, maybe we've created a hungry hippo or something, I'm not sure. Um, but we can look at it again. I think that simple is always better. And 
The second piece, we want the document to cover all of the pieces that have, has not been covered in the last, what, 150 years or something. Um, it will make it simpler. I like simpler anyway. So editing and going to a work session, I'm, we're happy to do that. That's not a problem at all. So I certainly defer to the rest of council, but I, I would certainly be more comfortable if I could actually, because again, I have way too many notes to discuss with you guys and get educated on tonight. That's great. I think I would second uh, Councillor Fortune's, uh, some of her concerns. In, in looking through the memorandum, I think there was a lot of good sentiment, but uh, there were some points that it was, I have found to be kind of vague as to pay for repairs of 500 to or $1,000 and, and um, some, some of the other things as to who would be responsible for what. And I, I think it doesn't hurt to spell that out more clearly. And, and as I think back in, in the last year, we had a, an art installation on Canyon Avenue, the, the tree couple, and I think administratively it, it didn't go as smoothly as we would like. Now, I would hope that this reconstitution of your two groups does a lot to address some of those problems, and, and certainly in, in trying to go back and do an after action and figure out what, what went wrong or what didn't go as smoothly as it should, there were a lot of lessons learned. I would like us to, to bring that into the, into the fold so that we can, when we say we're going to take a week to do an art installation, that it doesn't turn into six weeks, um, you know, and, and I, I think I, I, I think that's your intent, but I, I, I believe it, it wouldn't hurt for us to hammer that out just a little bit more. And I appreciate that, John. Um, the artist agreement that I mentioned very briefly in my notes um, will address that issue. And we have to have everybody on the same page here. That's how this works. We're not going off and, and trying to confuse anyone. So the more clarity and the more simplicity and the less redundancy, the better. We will be happy to meet with anybody who wants to meet. We can go through this line by line if you want. Um, may require some coffee. But we, we want to make this work for everyone. That's my point. And I assure you, as I said earlier, I assure you that the operation will be much clearer and much more smoothly run um, because we have a new team. It's as simple as that. And you can do anything with a great team. I agreed, Patsy, and I, and I have a lot of faith in this team. And, and I think you were the one that told me one time that you knew how to squeeze three dimes out of a quarter. I do. Good. Okay. I so get changed too. Okay, that that's what we need. Okay, so that would be a good thing. Okay. Yes. Council, other questions? Natalie, please. So it, I'm just trying to figure this out. So should we submit our changes to this team in advance, or should we just hold back and wait until a work session, or how would you like us to share our suggestions? May I answer, John? Sure. Um, I know how much time y'all spend on council, which is why I don't sit up there. But um, yes, we would appreciate, and you can send them to me or send them to Becca. Um, send them to Becca, we'll sit down and we can answer them, and then at the work session, we won't have to go over the same stuff over and over again. We can eliminate redundancies at the beginning and clarify some questions and use those as a format to straighten out this MOU. If everybody agrees, Council, is there any objection to that? That seems like a good s s path forward. Okay, so, so question, uh, we're two months from basically kind of the start of our summer season. I always think of May 1st as time when we should have things in place. So we've got two months. Uh, if we hold off on here, and, and I, when I say hold off, I mean we want to go through this process of hammering sure. things out. I would hope that we can go ahead and get whatever installations or preparation work done that we need for the summer without this being an encumbrance. Does, there, does it appear that there's any risk the, in your schedules to doing this? I, I do not foresee any risk at all. Okay, I, I don't either. I'm trying to, to see that. Staff, do you see any problem caused by this? None. Okay, good. So we have a chance to make it better. Council, I, I, Natalie? I just wanted to say a quick thing. Um, I just want to say that even though the Arts Council, I mean, I'm thrilled with the new team, but I wanted to give a shout out to all their volunteer work. You guys have been maintaining our public art for a long time, and Audrey's been integral to that. So I just wanted to say that I'm excited, but I don't want to, you know, I felt like we were highlighting the things that didn't work, and there was a lot that really did work, so I just wanted it, to. It, it's art on the streets. Yeah. 
Great. Yeah, I think it would be good to have an opportunity to maybe clarify a few points here because uh, it seems like there have been some disconnects in the past. And maybe having two groups was part of it, you know, that one group thought the other group was responsible. And we've had a lot of problems. Hopefully we'll get this nailed down. It's the water under a burnt bridge. Great. Thanks. Okay. If there's no objections to the council, we'll, uh, we'll go, we can go ahead and forward our questions to... Uh, Send them to Patsy or, well, to, do you want send to Becca? Send them to Becca. Okay. Um, and we can put, um, w send out a, an, a memo or email to the council so you n have the correct emails and um, perhaps a copy of this so you'll have it all at one place. Yeah, we want your input. We want to work with everybody here. Okay, and great. Thank you. Okay, um, we should probably have a timeline on this. Uh, if we gave council, say, two weeks to submit uh, questions, would that be? Yeah, two weeks is good. Okay, so two weeks, so uh, March 15th would be two weeks, that'd be the Ides of March. <laughs> Seems prophetic. Okay, and then uh, let's say maybe you have a month to get back, work oh, through it. we won't need that long. Okay, so April 15th, tax day is about when we expect to have this hammered out. Sure. Sound good? Julie, you got a question? Uh, I just, uh, I would ask if people want to uh, send in comments about the rewrite or questions, if they could copy all of council, because it helps me to see what other questions people have already had, or if there's something that's already been written, rewritten in a way that sounds clearer to me, then I won't bother. So that might avoid some duplication. So, uh, so I was just going to throw that suggestion yeah, out there. Julie, I see the efficiency in that. However, I, I think we run the danger of, of running afoul of the open meetings law. Right. Uh, because then we're communicating between us. And you know, I, I know what you mean. And I used to do this at work, which is a much different environment, and it, it, it worked well there, but here we're talking about uh, open meetings. So I, I, I think we should probably just direct our yeah, comments to, to, uh, to Becca and let her uh, sort of curate the things. Do, do, does that make sense now? Yeah, I, uh, without Jeff here, I have no idea. There are exceptions, and I don't know if this falls in an exception or not, but it's not a big deal. It's fine. I'm ready to let it go. I don't want to bother asking him. And Okay. Council, other questions or comments? We will keep all the emails, by the way, and, but we'll be able to go through the comments and the questions um, and kind of sort everything out. Okay. I guess... Go ahead. Just to... Sorry, Becca Sickbert, 1821 West Bijou Street, Colorado Springs. I would mention, yes, we will absolutely collate all of the input, thank you for the collaboration and partnership. That is absolutely the most important thing to us. What I do want to clarify is that this MOU is not to supplant a public art policy. So while we are working on this MOU with all of you and staff, thank you, thank you staff, um, we're also working with the community to schedule a number of public outreach meetings to hear from our, our artists and our creatives about how to deliver a better process. Because what we know is our Arts Council volunteers and leaders have done exceptional work. It is a ton of work. And so to make it easier for everyone is really our goal. Those meetings will be coming up in late April and early May, so we'll keep you posted. We'd invite your participation and comments in advance or during those public meetings. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess, Becca, as you get uh, you know enough critical mass and comments back from council, perhaps it would make sense for you to forward them to Denise and she could send them to council. Uh, I, I think uh, if we did a just kind of a broadcast uh, from the, th th that, that would give council some awareness of what the, um, what questions had, had been asked and maybe that sort of, sort of addresses the concerns that Councillor Wolf had and then we'd still say on the, on the good side of the Sunshine Law. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mayor, may I suggest a, a process? April 12th would be the working session. So that would be a work session, and they could collect the information from council and then bring all of that back and have it part of the memo and address the questions there. So everything would be in the open and the conversations would be, so they would bring it in the memo saying, here's all the questions, here are the answers, and here's how we move forward. So that might be, that way it's all in the open and it's part of, we don't worry about the sunshine law and we just make it part of the working session for April 12th. 
idea. Okay, and I guess that'd be a little simpler for staff too, which would be a good thing. Right, and then they would propose, they would do a PowerPoint maybe at that presentation and then you could work through each issue there. Okay, is there any objection to, to that course of action? Okay, hearing none. Okay, so April 12th, let's target that date. Okay, great, thank you. Any, any further questions from council? I guess not, great, thank you ladies. Thank you, excitement is coming. Well, gosh, it's not quite seven o'clock, and here we are to uh, council correspondence. Um, so with that, um, does anyone have anything you'd like to start off with? Councilor Chandler? I do. Um, I actually was going to, earlier this evening, um, ask that we amend the, the agenda. Uh, but However, uh, I do believe that this question that I have really requires um, some input from our city attorney. Um, so um, what I would like to propose is um, we had the Carnegie Library on the agenda for this evening. And um, I, un I understand now that um, it is, won't be on the agenda again until April, um, at which point um, you know, we're going to be discussing funding. And um, I, especially after reviewing the resolution and having some questions about that, um, and also having attended both the Zoom and the in-person um, community meeting, uh, I'm very con concerned that the conversations about the Carnegie Library um, are not a done deal. And I want to continue that conversation. So I would like, uh, we used to have a process where council members could ask for future agenda items to be, to, to be put on the uh, agenda, and I'm asking for the Carnegie Library to be put on uh, an agenda in March so that we can continue the discussion. My question that I will um, be needing to get some, um, some input from Par Jeff Parker, um, and I don't know if he's, if you're listening in, Jen, Jeff, if you are, um, I want to reconsider my vote on resolution 1521. And I have a rationale for wanting to reconsider my vote. I have uh, uh, done a deep dive into Robert's Rules of Order and I want some clarity on, on that. And um, I want to be able to have a council discussion on, uh, on why I want to have a discussion on that resolution. I'd like to provide just a little bit of background information on uh, something. I think a month, several months ago, or maybe the first of the year, we did have uh, the Carnegie Library scheduled for, I believe it was tonight, and then um, they asked to have it moved to uh, April the 5th, whatever, the, the first Tuesday in April, and part of that was driven by uh, their thinking was that we should have our council rich treat before they wanted to make their presentation because I think they're gonna ask us for money. And they wanted us to have an opportunity to sort of go through our goal session. Uh, and because we, for various reasons, delayed our, our, um, you know, our, our council retreat and goal session, they asked to have things moved back. So it had been on the agenda for tonight, once upon a time, that was probably six weeks ago, something like that, and so it did get, um, pushed out, but that was changed at least a, a month ago. So I think that that had nothing to do with the, the things the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm sorry, Mayor, when you said they, are you talking about the task force or who, I'm, who's they? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, by, by they I mean the Carnegie uh, task, okay. the library task force, yeah. I see. So that was, um, they had, uh, they asked to, to have that moved from March 1st to April the 5th. Okay, so that's that's how the mechanism for that was. Okay, now I know three of you had emailed and said we'd like to talk about, and I, I don't think it was the design of the, the Carnegie Library, it was, uh, it was in response to um, John Spears' resignation, and I think questions about basically censorship uh, and the, the flavor of, uh, of censorship that maybe we see, or we, we suspect is pervading the, the Pikes Peak Library District uh, Board of Directors. Um, so if, if council wants to have that discussion, I think that would be fine. I, th I think we need to be careful to differentiate it from you know the design of the library. We have kind of like two, they both have library in the name and they're different, 
different kinds of uh, conundrums, if you will. Yeah, Judith? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say I don't think that those two conversations are mutually exclusive. I, I, I believe that we um, have to be very careful um, should PPLD and the new very conservative members of the board who are publicly in the media saying that they are interested in possible censorship and uh, are um, listening to their constituents about who, who, who um, have religious problems with being in a library right now. I think that we as a community need to make a strong statement on where we stand with regards to censorship of any kind and B, make sure that we have a library design that should at any time, and I hope we don't, please, I'm, I'm often misquoted, but I, I, lo I love our relationship with PPLD, but I also, these are really strange and, 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 and weird times we live in. And if um, PPLD were to move into that direction, I would like some guidance from our city attorney on how we protect ourselves legally from um, should we have to do so um, contractually, um, um, should, should we need to make changes in that agreement. Um, and I, we, need a, we need a library that we can afford to run either way, with PPLD or without PPLD. So I think that they're not mutually exclusive. Um, I, and I also want to have an opportunity to speak specifically to my concerns about um, how um, the resolution 1521 was um, written and um, why it is so misleading. And um, so I want to be able to have that a public conversation about that. Okay, uh, Julie. Uh, I have a suggestion. I suggest that if there's time on our agenda to address both the design as well as the um, censorship concerns. If there's time to do that in March during a work session, that we should consider doing so. However, if March, and I, I don't know what the work session agenda looks like, but if March is already too full, I would suggest we take that April 5th date that is currently set aside to discuss the finances for the, um, library and postpone that and use the date to discuss the design and the censorship first because I agree with Judith we need to have a discussion about the design whether there's going to be um, uh, a resolution to revoke uh, what is it 1521 I'd be in favor of revoking that resolution and um, and uh, so I don't know if we need a motion to put that uh, potential revocation on the agenda or if it'll just be put on as a friendly thing. But I do believe that discussion has to occur, at least for me, before I'm interested in discussing money. It's like asking me to commit to buying a house that I haven't completely had a chance to walk through yet. I, I want to do the walkthrough before I decide the money. Okay, thank you. Uh, Natalie? Um, I just wanted to add a slightly different take on some of this, that I think that while censorship is the outcome, I think the issue is that these boards are becoming political and that they're not supposed to be political. And so it might be that we don't come out against censorship, we come out against the politi politicalization of boards like school boards and the district and things like that. So I just want us to be careful when we're using this language because they, they aren't actively censoring anything and so we could actually provoke a problem as opposed to a fight for the betterment of our library. So I just want us to be careful if that makes, does that make sense, that difference? It doesn't make sense to me. It makes no sense. Well, okay. it, it, makes, it makes some sense to me. I mean it's, well, yes, but it's. Uh, I mean, if school boards weren't yeah. political, they wouldn't discuss critical race theory. Everything is political, though. I think everything is political. We are, we're not allowed to tell the Pikes Peak Library District Board of Trustees that, oh, if you want to uh, do the censorship, and they don't call it censorship, it's, it's been called so far uh, parent rights. So if you want to pursue parent rights, which maybe you can do legally, um, I, I, I can't tell them, 
oh, that's kind of political, so we should keep out of it. The entire country is seeing politics, if you want to call it that, or you could just call it a difference of views. Maybe it's time for parent rights to come to the forefront. If that's being political, we can't uh, criticize uh, them for, they can vote on, if they want to vote on it, they can vote on it. So uh, by saying, oh, let's call it political, well, we could call it, we could call it porn. Uh, it's still going to be allowed well, to I be discussed and to be voted Julie, against. I think the city clerk needs to make a point here with, with us, a point of order, is it, Judy? Right, maybe if we can get back to um, the, the, well, the council correspondence. I, I know the question's been put out about putting it on a future agenda and how, what the wording needs to be on that. So okay. rather than have that discussion so, without it being agendized. Okay, I and, and, I, and I, I think there's enough sentiment here, and in this, I'll just quickly make the comment that um, Early April is National Library Week. We received uh, a, um, a draft of a proclamation from PPLD. They would like us to uh, approve that. Uh, in, in light of how things went, I, I, I wrote a different version. What I'd like to do is send a copy of both what they gave me, the original, and what I did to, to counsel. And you can look at it, because I did touch on the, the censorship thing. I, I wasn't as wild as I could be. But I will ask you all to review that and see if that maybe is a step that would be constructive. In the meantime, if you want to discuss this at a, a city, uh, you know, at a work session or at a meeting, we can we could do that. Can so, I ask Judy a procedure question that sure, I don't go, know? Please. So, are we allowed to make a motion at this time to put something on the agenda, or what is the proper procedure to get something on the agenda through motion? When when does that motion get made? Well. I, I think I could simply ask, and we'll take a vote on it here, if, okay. Judy, if that's yes, okay. I so, so the okay. So, the, I think the intent here, Council, do, do you? The question is, do you want to discuss PPLD relative to the the censorship in policy sorts of questions? I, I'm I want to discuss that and the design at the same okay. meeting. Well, okay, let's let let let's make those two separate items. Okay, I mean, okay. So, Julie, I take that as a yes. Natalie, you're for it. John? In a work session, definitely. Yeah, okay, in a work session. John, what's your take? You're for it, okay. Nancy? I'm not particularly need to talk about it. I think um, it's unnecessarily antagonistic at this point in time. I think it's premature to be talking about it. Um, I did talk with one of the library employees, senior library employees, and um, who is working with the new um, board and is, is said that there's uh, a lot more understanding uh, by the new members that they have now once they started learning more about their roles and what they're doing. So I would like to um, just wait a little bit before we uh, get too deep into it. I don't, I don't want to be antagonistic and I, I would rather do things like, not as a council but as individuals, work to get the um, uh, openings that are coming up next year on the board and make sure that we get good candidates that we feel will represent the broader population. Does that mean you think we have input on that? Yeah, I, I definitely think that we can. Um, but we don't I, legally have input We on don't that. legally have input, but I, I would like to, us to work to get I, ha I have some ideas for some good candidates that I think would be excellent, that I think could be appointed, that would be appointed. So you don't want to discuss any of this at a work session, though? No, I think it's premature to discuss it at a work session, or for us to discuss it at this point. I, I would like to see things play out and see if how, if this is just talk or how realistic a threat there is. Okay, thank you. Judith? So I respectfully disagree with um, Councillor Fortune, I think this is the perfect time to ha be having these discussions before we approve the final design. Um, so what I would like to see happen is um, I would like to have a discussion about that, the PPLD and, the, and, the, and what's going on there and the potential censorship that might or may or may not be coming and how we position ourselves to get ahead of it instead of behind it. I also want to uh, discuss the design of the library and um, I also want to have a discussion um, about reconsidering um, Resolution 1521. I do want to go on record as saying, because I am often misquoted, 
I am pro-library, I am pro-library design, I am pro-library expansion. Um, what I want to see happen is make sure that we have a thoroughly democratic process where no one feels that um, they have not been heard. And what, I, um, what was demonstrated to me um, and, and the feedback that I got after the meeting was there, there, there were uh, many, many residents who felt that they were misled by the process. I also feel that I was misled by the process. I'm not saying that that was conscious, conscious or unconscious. Um, there's some language I'm concerned with, and I just want to have a respectful discussion about that um, so that we make sure that we, um, and I, this was a great learning experience for me because um, w once I, vo I voted for this resolution, and two weeks later I had a cup of coffee with someone on the library task force, and we were talking about... Point of, point of order, um, if you don't, point of order. We're, I think we're getting too deep into okay. the subject okay. matter. So, this yeah, is so, great for the okay, agenda. Okay, so I'll leave it there. I'll take I'll leave that it there. as Thank a yes. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate you rating me in. Okay. okay, we'll take that as a yes. Michelle? It's a yes on all three. Nice and simple, yes. Okay. Um, well, I think we have a majority council wanting, wanting to do that. Nancy, you have... No, is that for both issues or just the PPLD uh, issue? No, excuse, excuse me. That we, we start off... I, it's for three uh, issues, I thought. Okay, we, we, we have managed to mangle this and, and bundle stuff on. Okay, let me go around the room again. Okay, this, this time I want a yes or no answer, and this is specifically, do you want to discuss PPLD policy and censorship? We'll go around and we'll do the, the other round on, um, on the building, and then if we want to, and then we'll do a round on the resolution. Okay, so this round, I'll start over here, yes or no answer. Do you want to talk about PPLD policy and censorship? Julie? Yes. Yes. John? Not at this time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so we've got five yeses. Um, I've got misgivings, but that, that's enough. Okay. So we will put discussion of PPLD policy and um, censorship on a, on a future agenda. Okay, now we'll discuss the building. And before we, we get in there, I would like to uh, mention, uh, you know, I guess I have a, a question. Um, we went through a process, you know, I, I realized it was in the world of Zoom, but we all suffered through at least 16 months of Zoom. Um, I talked to several people Wednesday night who said, well, it was Zoom, it didn't count. You know, I, I went to the meeting, but I didn't talk as long as I wanted to or whatever, or I wasn't heard. Um, you know, and I, I don't know that we ever completely overcome that. Uh, I have e extreme reservations about uh, starting a process over. I think uh, I think the library task force moved forward with. Uh, uh, they I think they were inclusive. I try, think they tried to involve most people. On the other hand, I've met Mayor, some people that I think are point of order. Uh, if we can, okay, now, yeah, I, I'm I'm bad. Okay, I'll bring candy. My bad. Okay. All right, so the question is, do you want to discuss the buildings? <laughs> Julie, yes or no? <laughs> yes, yes or no? Yes, okay, Natalie. No. Yes. No, and I would like to hear from HPC before we discuss. I, I just want to hear from HPC on it. Okay. At their next round of looking at it. Judith? Yes. And Michelle? No. And I vote no. So we have four no's. So um, it's a curious situation. Okay. So then the third item is uh, resolution 1521 to uh, bring that back for discussion. Yes. Julie? Yes. I'm sorry. Julie, yes. Natalie? No. Okay. John, yes. I'll vote no. 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 Judith? Yes. Michelle? Ye yes. Yes, okay, so the yeses get that one, so we'll bring that one, we will put that on the agenda. Okay, all right, uh, Judy, I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope I better behave now, so, may okay. I, may I ask, point of, is yeah. that for the April 12th working session? Is that when those items are gonna be coming back? Is that, I just need to know so we have it on the calendar. We, we didn't set any date on that. Um, are those working sessions or regular sessions? I, I think they need to be a work, se working, okay. uh, a work session. If we don't have room on a work, work session, we do on a regular session, maybe we, we do on a regular session though. Julie. With respect to the resolution, 
We may have to have a hybrid meeting that night because don't we have to pass resolutions in a, in a meeting and not in a work session? Right. So we could have that be a hybrid perhaps so that we could cover both issues in the same evening if you wish? Well, we, we could. I mean, a lot of times, of course, we, we talk about things in work session and then take formal action the following week at the regular session. Okay. So, if I mean, if, if the intent is to try and package this all together, which, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of a lot of material, and I think the opportunity to be confusing may, may be... Yeah. Um, I'm not in a rush. I, I just thought it might make the library board happy that we're resolving things all in one night, but uh, it's fine with me. I don't okay. mind. Well, and then further complicating this is, um, and they're already on the agenda for April the 5th, so if we do this on the 12th, that's going to be yeah, kind of after the fact. I, I think we're going to have to sit down and think this through just a little bit, but I, I think... I, I'm sorry, I think the intent here is to do it right rather than do it fast, if if we have to pick. I'm sorry, Julie, you were going to say? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was interrupting. I can't vote on, personally, I, I'm not going to vote yes on any kind of financial contribution to the library until these two issues have been addressed. So, for me personally, it's kind of backwards to go forward with the financial meeting and then afterwards discuss the other issues that we're going to be discussing. So I would suggest okay. we either push the financial meeting out further so that we can use the date that's already pegged for the, PP, uh, for the library discussion and just change the focus of the library discussion and then have uh, the following work session perhaps could be, or what meeting could be when you go forward with what you were going to do already with um, them asking us for money. Okay. Um, well, Council, okay, March 22nd, three weeks from tonight, would be a work session. We, we don't have anything scheduled for it. And we, you know, I was kind of thinking if we, if we didn't have to meet, you know, we can get a night off. However, there's five Tuesdays this month, so we will definitely be taking May 29th or March 29th off. So we could tackle this stuff on March 22nd. That would come in before the anticipated library discussion on April the 5th. Uh, if that's, if there's no objections, I propose we do that. I guess, Denise, I'd look to you for advice as well. Yeah, if that's, we have the all day Sunday meeting and that's the 20th and then the 22nd is Tuesday. So that would be the work session and we'd just focus for the library then. And you'd have both, all three of the, or both of those items on the agenda for the work session. Okay, would, does that, would that work, Council? Any objection? Okay, and then I guess also I would ask that, and, and I don't know what some of the uh, the individuals who presented last week out in the, the atrium um, with their other ideas, I guess if, if they're going to, yeah, yeah, I'm not really sure what their, uh, they don't have an official relationship, uh, they're not part of the, uh, the, the the task force, but if they were going to have ideas, I'd want them to have it before that time so that that could be factored into the discussion. When is, Explain when is what it going you mean? to... I don't know what you just said. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was a little vacuous. Um, yeah, so we, we've, we've heard from other community members who are not part of the library task force, okay, and, and, and Tina Reestitter and her model, for instance. If they want to pursue some other ideas, you know, I, I don't. I, I think it'd be a bad idea to carry this out too far away into the future. But if if they wanted to present to do something, I, I would want to have it done on or before the twenty second of March, so that we could put everything together and and, and look at it completely. Mayor, Mayor um, I understand you're trying to kind of wrap up some. Yeah. Um, decisions on who needs to be there maybe, but we do need to stick with. Uh, yeah, I understand, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'll be better in my next You're life. You're going to jail. Yeah, you, you, that's the third time. <laughs> <laughs> may, I, okay. may, I may I ask I'm a sure. question? Okay, Judith. So I just wanna make sure that, um, that, I, that I'm, I'm hearing everything. On the 22nd, on a Tuesday work session, we're gonna talk about all three issues or we're not so because I do want to discuss resolution 1521 and my and my concerns with it 
And um, so, and I, you know, I, I don't want Judy to call point of order, and she's so good at that with me because um, she keeps me in line. But I, I just want to make sure I know which dates we're discussing what. Okay, so I, I would propose that we do all three things that night on the 22nd. Any objection? So, okay, the three Mayor, things. Uh, Mayor, if I mean, I've, I've taken some notes here. There's two of them that had a majority that said, yes, let's put it on a work session. You're right. Yeah. And those, that was the uh, censorship um, issue and the, the board, the PPLD board, and the other was to reconsider the 1521 resolution. Okay, so we have those, you're right, that's those two items. So those are the two items we would then discuss on the 22nd, 22nd of March. Is that, is that clear, Julie? Yeah, that, that is clear. Were you saying that you do or you don't want the 22nd to include allowing uh, the group to present their model? I, I was unclear on where you ended up with that. Yeah, I, I think I was uh, having a senior moment, Julie. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> no, in, in retrospect, uh, since we, we voted against bringing back a discussion of the building, that kind of makes it a, a moot point. Um, and I'm not it really sure. It won't be moot if the resolution gets rescinded, but I guess we can always, time is on our side, so that's fine. It's one step at a time. Okay, thank you. Well, we, we kind of worked through that. Um, who else has something? for council correspondence. Julie? I just got a lot of feedback this week from residents, um, outraged, depressed, uh, very upset that they were not allowed at a public meeting to present their position on the design change with this model. And we, we're told that the reason the word conditional or uh, conceptual, pardon me, precedes the word design in the resolution, we were told it's a conceptual design. It's not the final design, it's a conceptual design. And so those people in the public were under the impression that it was conceptual means it's subject to further discussion. And so I did get a number of phone calls and some unhappy people this week about the fact that they were prohibited from participating in that meeting. I, I appreciate that they were allowed to sit in the, in the hallway, but um, so that was the feedback I got this week. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, let's go to uh, city administrator's reports. Yeah, just a, a report on the uh, Manitou soccer program. We have 50 kids signed up, and that'll start next week. So take a look in the parks on that. Um, the Colorado Springs Incline has submitted a Leave No Trace gold site uh, program, so they're going to be inspected and hopefully pass that they leave no trace up on the incline and it's a hard thing to get uh, certified. So they are working on that and we should know in a couple months if they're certified. And the last thing is that the uh, transit study is on track. We just received data from Stantec and have a lot of good mobility data for the city that will be able to present um, a transit uh, um, program um, to the map board and then to the city council uh, by April. So thank you. Thanks, Roy. Denise? Um, just a couple, today was free groceries and I don't know how many participants we had for that, so I'm not, sh I don't have that number yet. And then reminding, I still remind everybody to sign up for peak alerts. It's really, really important. I'll oh, keep right. pushing that. It's on our website. Sign up, sign up, sign up in case of an emergency. Great, thanks. Anything else? Okay, yeah, Nancy. Just for the CML conference, um, can can we still, I mean, I know I'm signed up for it, but can I still sign up for the sessions? I haven't done that yet. Yeah, we need your signature, we need you to sign up ASAP because that fills pretty quickly. So if you can please call Lisa. I know, I think she's gotten you, Judith, mine, Michelle, did she get yours? I don't know if she got all of your. I told her that I would show all of my. Okay, the mayor's. Natalie, and we haven't heard from Julie or from John. I, may I ask you a question you on bet. that? 
is it possible, and I, I don't know that they would do this, but um, is it possible that you could attend, that I could attend part of the conference, but not all three days and all three nights or all two nights or what have you? I just didn't want to, you know, have the city pay for. Uh, we'll have to pay the full registration, but not every night of the hotel. So if you just let us know, then Lisa can take care of it from there. So just let her know which days you'll be attending and what you want to attend and which nights you'll be oh, staying. Thank you. Could I, could I say one more well, thing? Yeah, please, Nancy. Mm -hmm. I, I've gone once before, and we do have council generally that Tuesday night, so can't go till Wednesday morning, and it was no problem the last time I went to, I just got up to Breckenridge, you know, midday, and was able to attend everything that was really important. So Tuesday's not as critical. Yeah, and that will be up to council whether you want to postpone that Tuesday night or maybe hold it Monday night so you could go up Tuesday night. So that's something to consider from a council perspective of whether you want to do that council meeting on a Monday night so everybody could head up if they wanted to. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Denise, good. Okay, if uh, there's nothing else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. May I say some, one more thing oh. about the conference? Sure. And, and this is mostly for you, Mayor. I know that uh, Friday the 24th, I don't know if you're going all days with the conference. Um, I just saw your name on the list, but that's the day the, of the mayor's ride. And I wasn't sure if that was something you were going to, that you knew about or had acknowledged that, because I, I know that that's um, something with Mayor Southers, too. So. I, What's the status of the mayor? Right. Mayors? Thank you. Yeah, I know when we were making this, I, I looked in my calendar and saw that there was conflict there. So my, I expect to I'll probably come back uh, Thursday night, and then uh, we'll have the uh, the mayor's bike ride that Friday, uh, June the twenty fourth, uh, and Mayor Southers will be riding from Colorado Springs. And anyway, so yeah, that's still on. Right. I we'll I just need to know so that we don't book you for that night. I, I think I told Lisa. Okay, it, thank you. It, it wouldn't hurt to double check, save a night's rent. Cool. Take a, entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, Julie and Judith, all in favor say aye. Oh, we push our little buttons. Unanimous. Okay. Approval. All right. Thank you. <laughs>